Hi, this is Tim Cohen. I want to talk to you today about the subject of overcoming obstacles when we're engaging people to talk to them about the Lord and spiritual things. You know, we all have a worldview, the lens through which we view our lives, and we make sense of the world around us. And that worldview is informed by a lot, a lot of things, uh, the way we were brought up. It's informed by our religious upbringing, uh, our perspective on politics. Our worldview is made up of a lot of things. And those things really come to bear when we're being engaged by someone else about something that we're not familiar with. And oftentimes we can get into arguments based on our worldview that are intended to actually keep people out and keep, and keep them at arm's distance instead of letting them in to have a, a heart-to-heart conversation about the facts of something we may not be familiar with. And that's what often happens when we are engaging others with the good news of the gospel of Jesus. And I want to encourage you that there's a really simple way to overcome any of those obstacles that are either brought up by someone's worldview or that the enemy brings up and he triggers on the inside of them. There's an easy way to overcome them, and we're going to use Jesus. We're going to look at Jesus in John chapter 4 and how he deals with the woman that he found at the well. So in John chapter 4, we know that he and his disciples had come to Samaria. Samaria, they were on a long journey, and they were hungry, so he sends his disciples into town to get some food. He's left alone with this woman who's drawing water, and he simply asks her to give him a drink. And here's where we see the first obstacle. The woman, in verse 9, was surprised, for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Very interesting. The first obstacle is a cultural obstacle. And culture matters. Uh, We are finding that out in uh, new ways here in uh, the U.S. As we really are in the midst of some, some important cultural discussions, some of which have, have sprung into culture wars. Uh, if you have ever tried to engage someone that you don't know or someone that has a different view about something than you do, and you unintentionally use a word that has any kind of uh, cultural ramifications to that person that you aren't aware of, wow, you feel the roadblock go up immediately, and that obstacle presents itself and their heart becomes very closed off toward you. That's a very real dynamic that we encounter uh, on almost on a daily basis if you're engaging people uh, outside of your sphere on a regular basis. So Jesus asked this woman for a drink and, and this obstacle comes up and it's a cultural one. Jews don't have anything to do with Samaritans, so why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus doesn't engage the obstacle. Notice this. He continues on and he says, if you only knew the gift God has for you, And who you were speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. See what he does there? He doesn't engage the obstacle, that cultural thing. He engages her with a supernatural, spiritual truth. I am the gift. If you only knew. See, the invitation is being made by Jesus. He's inviting her. He's wetting her appetite, saying, listen, if you just knew. He's not condemning her. He's not rejecting her. He's not arguing, arguing with her. He just embraces her with the invitation. Listen, you you have something in front of you today. You might want to take a look. But here's the second obstacle in verse uh, verse 11. She says, but sir, you don't even have a rope or a bucket. And this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? You see, when other obstacles maybe that are are more deep, come out of more deep-seated perspectives from our worldview. When other obstacles come up, it's very easy for us to get distracted um, by just simply the natural realm. And here Jesus is trying to change the subject matter or deepen the subject matter out of just the natural realm, which, which is where the cultural differences lie, and into the spiritual realm. And so he's using the analogy of water now in a spiritual way. And he said, I've got some living water for you. And she didn't get the transition or the translation from the analogy. And so she says, listen, how are you going to offer me any water? You don't have anything to draw water from this well with. And she was right in the natural, but she was missing 
the invitation, which was spiritual. So the first obstacle is cultural. The second obstacle is natural. And here's where we get the third obstacle. In verse 12, she says, And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave you this, gave us this well? Interesting here. She, now she's tempted to be offended. And this, this really gets to a, a, the heart of a kind of a spiritual matter. There was a spiritual uh, deviation between the Jews who worshipped in Jerusalem, which was right, and the Jews who and, and the Samaritans who decided to set up sacrifices in Samaria and thought that they didn't have to go to Jerusalem as God had commanded. And now we're getting to the heart of a spiritual obstacle. And so now she's tempted to be offended. But again, Jesus doesn't go head on at this, this obstacle. Listen to this is the key. Listen to how Jesus does this. He asked her a very simple question. Go, why don't you go and get your husband? He wasn't patronizing her or looking down on her. This was a word of knowledge from Holy Spirit, a question that was going to lead her from out from, from behind those obstacles into a, an honest dialogue about Jesus. Why don't you go get your husband? And she said, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband for you are, you've had five husbands and the one you're with now, you're not even married to. So you certainly spoke the truth. What was Jesus doing? He was leaning into the Holy Spirit. You remember, he's our example, right? He lived on this earth as a man. He, he had limited his access to all of the divine attributes of power and not all knowledge and all those things. And he was relying on what he saw and heard from Father and he pulled on the power of Holy Spirit. He was leaning into Holy Spirit, got a word of knowledge about what was really going on in her life. And dear ones, here's the key. If you want to overcome obstacles while you're sharing Jesus with people, sharing the good news of the gospel, talking about spiritual things in the kingdom of God, don't go blow for blow with arguments about the obstacles. Tap into Holy Spirit. Learn to catch either a word of knowledge or heal, a word of knowledge about healing, about their lives. There are nine supernatural gifts in 1 Corinthians 12. There are gifts uh, throughout the New Testament uh, of supernatural gifts to the church at our disposal. Lean in like Jesus. And Jesus gave her a word of knowledge about what was really going on in her life. And you know what it did? Two things. Look at verse 17. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. First thing it did is it, it immediately changed her heart from being away from to being toward Jesus. So now she's like, wow, you must be a prophet. Wow. What a transformation in her heart in this conversation. And it all happened because of the word of knowledge, not because of arguments, not because Jesus was skillful in demolishing those obstacles, but because he relied on the supernatural nature of the kingdom to unlock her heart. And the second thing that happened is that she said, so tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place to worship? Now, before it was coming out of offense, like I can't believe now it's an honest question. Would you now tell me, if you are this prophet, which you obviously are, would you explain to me why the Jews uh, demand that we go to Jerusalem? And now the question's coming out of an honest heart that's engaging him, not an offended heart. Interesting. Listen, dear ones, we need to be sharing our faith. We need to be able to overcome the obstacles that the enemy brings up in people's lives, a smokescreen to try to drive them away from an honest conversation that might lead them to the Savior. And how we do that is so important. Let's take a play out of the playbook of Jesus and let's lean into the supernatural gifts of the kingdom of God and see God put his key in people's heart and unlock their hearts. This is what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14. If an unbeliever comes into the meeting of believers, the church, and he hears us prophesying, that's one of those supernatural gifts, prophesying to one another, his heart will be unlocked and he will go away praising God. Wow, what a treasure. Let's learn, like Jesus, how to uh, dismantle those obstacles, go around them, go right through them to unlocking people's heart with the supernatural nature of God's kingdom.